Now let's move away from descriptive metadata and start looking at administrative metadata. Um, in this case, specifically for the administration of preservation of objects, um, let's take a look at something called PREMISE, which stands for Preservation Metadata Implementation Strategies, which uh, is one of those acronyms that isn't really an acronym. Uh, it, PREMISE is one of many, many, many standards that have been developed by the Library of Congress and are maintained by the Library of Congress. Um, originally, the charge of the working groups and committees that created PREMISE was to develop a core set of metadata elements for the preservation of digital objects. Now, core, like Dublin Core, doesn't mean absolutely necessary mandatory, right? All elements are optional. It means sort of the bare minimum set of terms that are necessary to describe, in Dublin Core's case, describe any object for premise, it's to communicate data about how to preserve digital objects over time. Now, the question you should be asking yourself, of course, is what do we mean by preservation metadata? So this slide here is, um, I've grabbed some text from the premise documentation. Preservation metadata is the information a repository uses to support the digital preservation process. Now, a repository is some site or database or collection that has digital objects in it. Museums often have representations, digital representations of items in their collection, and that might be considered a repository. Um, digital preservation is a complicated business, and that's um, a much larger topic for discussion in information science, but in the context of premise, preservation means viability, renderability, understandability, authenticity, and identity. In other words, making sure that a digital object continues to exist over time, that it's accessible on the internet and usable, right? We've all seen 404 errors on the internet. Suddenly something is no longer accessible. We've all had the experience of looking at files that were several years old and we no longer have the software to interpret it, no longer usable. That a file can be interpreted and the meaning and intention behind it understood over time and that we can identify the original or canonical version and can identify copies or duplicates or edits or modifications of the original version. So when we're talking about digital objects, basically we're talking about files, right? Files of any format, text files, audio files, video, data sets, what have you. And I think you can easily see why viability and renderability are important for digital files. I recently moved my office and I found diskettes from years ago with files on them that I no longer have the software to read. And what's more, I don't even have a disk drive to put them in anymore. We're creating these videos for this course in whatever format they're being created in. Will we be able to view these videos in 10 years? should we want to. Each of those points requires a whole discussion, honestly, and preservation is a large and very active area of study in information science. I have colleagues who spend their careers in that area, so I'm giving it very short shrift here, but that's not important. It's a topic for later discussion. I think what's important is that we understand that the scope of premise is to provide metadata to support all of these functions of preservation 
for digital objects. Now, here is the data model for premise. Premise defines what they call semantic units. But we can think of them as metadata elements. Uh, they're not called elements in premise because the data might not actually be represented in an actual metadata record, but instead they're referred to as semantic units, which makes them a little more conceptual. There are several semantic units or elements, and these are intellectual entities, objects, events, agents, and rights. An intellectual entity is some chunk of content that can be considered a single item. Right? It can be a single item, it can be a collection, but whatever it is, it's considered a single thing, conceptually. The Mona Lisa may have more than one representation, but the Mona Lisa is the intellectual entity with multiple representations because lots of people have taken photographs of it. An object is a discrete unit of digital information, basically a file a single representation of the Mona Lisa, a single digital photograph. An event is something that happens at a particular point in time. Uh, the creation of a new file, the deletion of a new file, the creation of a new version of a file, etc. An agent is a person or organization that performs events and affects objects, and rights are rights, permissions, copyright, intellectual property, and the like. Premise doesn't actually provide any elements to describe intellectual entities. And the reason for that is that there are so many other descriptive metadata schemas out there that it was seen as redundant to do that. But Premise does provide elements to describe the other semantic units, objects, events, agents, and, and rights. So let's actually look at just one of the elements, the object identifier. And again, we're looking at objects because I think it's the most basic of the elements, right? If you're describing an object, you want to be able to describe the object. So let's look at the element to describe the object. First, the semantic unit is called object identifier. Semantic components essentially sub elements are object identifier type and object identifier value, sub elements of the object identifier element. Then we have a definition, rationale, uh, data constraint. This is a container element in that it contains the two sub elements. I said earlier that an object is essentially a file. Um, in fact, there are three different types of objects, but they are simply different ways to represent a file. Then we have the different constraints. Is it applicable? Is it repeatable? Etc. And then some notes. This has more pieces to it, but this table should look pretty familiar. It's just a single entity and an explanation of how to use it and the constraints on that entity, right? It looks just the same as Dublin Core and all of the other entities that we've looked at in this tabular format. So premise is a fairly complicated business here and it really requires a lot more time than we have uh, to get your head around. I mean. Quite honestly, you could have an entire course on digital preservation. One of my colleagues teaches such a course, in fact. So instead of walking through premise one entity at a time, as we did with Dublin Core, let's instead look at an example record and see if we can get our heads around that.